Hi guys, so now I'm going to uh, shock you all by showing you just how badly Genesis degenerated in the years after Peter Gabriel left and uh, eventually they ended up doing songs like this so let me bring it up Okay. Okay. Control, slowly tear. 
can you say about that? Absolutely dreadful, right? Absolutely dreadful. So just repetition the whole time. She seemed to have an invisible touch. Yeah. She seemed to have an invisible touch. She seemed to have an invisible touch. Yeah. She seemed to have an invisible touch. Da 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 and so on and so forth for about five minutes and uh, yeah utterly dreadful yeah, not a bad sort of little melody but just repetition 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 has no real middle section at all it's just the same same old phrase coming back the whole time she seems to have an invisible touch and that's a song basically and it's sad that Genesis should degenerate to such an extent that it could actually be churning out pop songs like it was like it was uh, I don't know the Bay City Rollers or something or Sweet these kind of ephemeral groups that came from the UK in the 1970s uh, this isn't much much different really you know I don't see how these guys uh, same guys who were playing with Peter Gabriel 10 years before writing great stuff Tony Banks Mike Rutherford Phil Collins I don't really see how they could how they could actually degenerate to this to this level my guess is that old Phil just had so much success with his pop songs but the others thought well yeah might as well get in on that you know we've had a long career probably coming to the end now soon we passed our sell, sell, by, sell by date why not go with Phil and he's already proved himself to be great at writing these pop songs so let, let him just do what he likes and we'll play along and hum along and sing along and make a lot of money in the process and they did of course and uh, yeah, as often often happens, something that's really pretty banal and terrible is extremely successful because, especially at that time, people just wanted to jump up and down on the dance floor. And it's not bad for that, really, is it? She seemed to have an invisible touch. Yeah. She seemed to have an invisible touch. Yeah. So yeah, it's maybe as a one part of a melody, it would not be. It would not one part of a song, one one melody in a song. It would not be bad, but just uh, the terrible repetition in it just makes it unlistenable, actually. So yeah, it's night and day if you compare the earlier songs by Genesis, which uh, which uh, I presented here uh, alongside this, and yeah, you can really you can really see the difference. I assume that. Uh, it's really Phil Collins that is, is the big difference here. I, I think he was always more oriented towards popularity than the others. And once he was let off the leash, he was he was uh, he found that he could he had a nice voice and he could easily make these sweet, sticky, sentimental uh, songs that everybody would start. I mean, especially people who weren't really that interested in music anyway, just wanted to have something fairly hummable and maybe something they could jump around on the dance floor to. So, yeah, this uh, represents the lowest point of degradation for, for Genesis, and uh, nothing could have been worse after this. In fact, they never did do anything worse than this, I don't think. This was this was the lowest point. So, if you enjoyed me hating that song, then please subscribe and uh, hit the like button. So, thanks again, and see you next time.